control, of course. So what is Haifa? Haifa is the third important city in Israel. Around 350,000 people live here. Haifa is the second important port in Israel after, after Ashdod. And Haifa is uh, in a, an important uh, an important city where there is an important university as well. So uh, oil is imported from Egypt and from other countries, which is officially not uh, in peace agreement with Israel, like Iraq. <laughs> um, oil is imported and treated here and uh, dispatched to the country, in addition to other chemical uh, factories. Uh, Haifa was first uh, mentioned in uh, the book of Talmud, the third century after Jesus Christ, and uh, it has other ancient location that's called Shikma, dating back a few centuries before Jesus Christ, but Haifa as a name was mentioned in the third century. It was mainly fortified during the, the 18th century by a Bedouin ruler whose name is Tahir Omar. But you can say that the, uh, the magic time or the magic time uh, or the brilliant time for Haifa uh, took place at the end of the 19th century for two reasons. First, it is the headquarter for the Baha'i religion. Baha'i religion. And this is the reason why I would like to, to show you a very beautiful place which is which was a candidate as one of the wonders of the world that belongs to the Baha'is. And also at this at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, we knew a group of uh, uh, Messianic uh, Christians whose name was the German Templars who settled down in the country and they brought with them the know-how uh, where they have built very beautiful houses and they have uh, helped fortifying the city in trade and industry. This is second point. If you look at your right hand side, look at the number of cars. Cars are important from abroad and they are uh, stored in the port of Haifa and then dispatched to the country. Whether you are a Muslim, Christian, Jew, Bodhi, Hindu, you all can worship your own God under one umbrella. The Baha'i religion allows you to worship your own God and they believe in the equality between sex, men and women, and uh, they believe that uh, uh, what, what is important is the freedom of uh, uh, practicing your own faith. But you have to pay one dollar a day so for this. So it doesn't, it's not a free religion. In order to join them, you have to pay a certain amount of money. Well, other religions do let you pay, but but not as a must for them. Uh, I think that they have uh, some wealthy members of the world. And you will understand why and how. When you see the, their garden, the gardens of Baha'i is really considered as a wonder of, of the world. A huge, long garden that, is, that has one kilometer of height one kilometer of height with 18 different levels the 18 different levels of gardens in the midway you will see a sanctuary that looks like a mosque but it's not a mosque a sanctuary where the messenger the one who came and announced for this religion whose name was al Bab, which is the gate uh, he is buried in Haifa and the founder of this religion 
whose name was Baha'u'llah, the gift from God, he is buried in, in Ekko. Ekko is the city which is found 30 kilometers north of Haifa. And uh, both Baha'u'llah and uh, the messenger are from Iran, Persians. Uh, by the way, the, the messenger was executed by the Iranis because he preached for something uh, not allowed. And, uh, his rest was brought, was brought to Haifa. And uh, Baha'u'llah, he was imprisoned at a certain moment by the English, and then when he passed away, he was buried in Echo. So Haifa, is, the name of Haifa is also related to this religion. But from the Christian point of view, Haifa is also connected with Prophet Elijah. This is very important. Prophet Elijah used to live in Israel and for the Israelis and for the Israelites, sorry, during the ninth century before Jesus Christ. Ninth century before Jesus Christ. And when we will visit the church of Haifa, the Stella Maris, uh, the Stella Maris or the Star of the Sea was built in 1821 and inaugurated in 1836 over a grotto, a cave, which, which is traditionally the cave where Prophet Elijah used to come to, to pray. Some tell you he used to live here, others is, well, it doesn't matter, but they have a grotto and uh, it is the reason why we have a Christian pilgrimage in the country. When Christians from uh, the different areas in Israel and Palestine um, come to visit the church on the feast of Saint Elias of Elijah.